Okay, right, what I'm showing is Fable 2, uh, a sequel obviously to Fable 1. And anyone who um, managed to catch my talk at GDC will already know that I'm trying to make Fable 2 the greatest role-playing game of all time again. Uh, this time I've learned from my mistakes. What I'm going to be doing is, and when I say I, I mean we, what we're going to be doing is focusing on a few features and polishing those to the highest possible level we can. And the first feature I t spoke about was how come the screen's gone black. Okay, um, as I was saying, we'll have a little bit of a pause. So what I'm trying to do is create the greatest role-playing game of all time, and I'm doing that by focusing on a few features. Now, where we are with Fable at the moment, we've got all of our gameplay kind of implemented to first pass. All of the story has been written. All the levels have been authored, but it's all at first pass. So what you're going to see here is pretty unpolished, and for the rest of the year, I'm going to be just polishing the game and refining the features that I've got. So the first feature I spoke about was all about dog and story and interactive storytelling and, and you know, emotion in game. The next feature I'm talking about is about combat. Because if I want to create a really, truly great game, and it's a role-playing game, then I've got to revolutionize combat. And what I've chosen to do is take the combat from Fable 1 and think about it in a totally new way. And the problem I've got as a designer is this, is that I know that to create the perfect role-playing game, some people, <laughs> some people will be casual gamers. And they, casual gamers at the moment, feel pretty intimidated by a lot of the games that we make. A lot of the games that you've seen in the last three days, most casual gamers will never be able to finish which is an incredible sadness. So that's one problem. Casual gamers feel intimidated. They want simplicity. They want easy. They want things to be easy, not to be hard. They hate dying. On the other side, I've got you lot, you hardcore gamers, and you're incredibly greedy. You always want more. You want, when we're talking about combat here, you want more moves. You want more special attacks. You want to experiment with different ways of combat. You want to have a unique combat style. You want to see the, the biggest combat move, the newest combat moves at the last five minutes of the game. And that's a really tough task for a designer to fulfill those two opposite ends of the spectrum. And the whole of this demonstration I'm going to be talking about now is just about combat and how I'm going to try and deliver on that dream of creating a system that both of those people can use. Now, why is that so important? It's important because of the third big feature in Fable, which I'm not allowed to talk about. The only thing I'm allowed, I've got away with saying with the PR guards that are standing at the back <laughs> shooting daggers with their eyes at the moment is this. I love co-op play, and I love multiplayer, and I love people showing off. That's all I'm allowed to say. <laughs> So it's important that we, we get to the hub of getting a combat system. So I'm going to show this now. <clears throat> and all of this whole demo, everything I'm going to do, insanely, is based upon one button. Now, one button combat has been tried before, and it's been really rubbish. And I'm, what I'm going to try and prove to you is that one button combat can be not only just good, it can be great and give you all the variation that you guys have got. And we, we've got some pretty interesting technology that supports that. But I'm going to start slow, and I'm going to try and explain exactly what we're, we're doing here. The first thing I'm going to do is talk to, uh, introduce you to this setting. We have not spent months and months creating a pre-can demo for you. This is the streets of Bowerstone. This is how they look at the moment. A lot of polish to go on here. Um, normally there'd be people hustling and bustling, this is the merchant district, normally it would be full of people, but we've just set one little scenario here where bandits have attacked and your job as a hero is to save the day and kill the bandits. You've played this sort of thing in many, many games before. So, let's just start off this combat. Now, I'll introduce you to something we're calling interactive cutscenes, and interactive cutscenes is not only the ability to 
watch a cutscene whilst continuing to play the game. But interestingly, to actually modify a cutscene as it's being played. So if someone comes up to you and they start saying, please, please help, we need your help, you can laugh at them if you want. You can hug them if you want. You can break wind if you want. It's completely up to you and that will totally change the feel of the cutscene and totally can change in some way the outcome of the story. That's pretty interesting. And as part of that interactive cutscene, I've got this button here, and this is called the look at button. The look at button will always show you something interesting. Sometimes it will show you if someone's talking for you from this balcony. Sometimes it will show you what your dog's doing. At this particular moment, the most interesting thing in the world is this guy up here. If I hold down this button, it will show me what this guy's doing. If I release the button, you can just spring back to you and I can just go in there or I can carry on watching this scene. So it's complete, you're completely free. This is kind of what you saw in Gears of War, but it's always there. Anyway, let's talk about combat. I'll draw my sword. I press the blue button to do that. And what is, what is, what's the thing that most casual gamers do? They do this. They button mash. All the time, they're, all they're doing is just button mashing. No rhythm, nothing. If I give this to any most casual gamers, that's what they will do. That's absolutely fine. They can finish the whole game button mashing. They're not going to get so much of a score, they're not going to get so much experience, and their hero isn't going to be as cooler looking. And that's one of the linchpins of this design, the score, the experience you get. So I'm going to show you how you get more experience from each stage of the combat. So the lowest experience you get is just, just hitting without any rhythm. If you hit with rhythm, notice I'm doing a little bit more damage there because I was hitting with rhythm, you'll get more of a score. If you actually can be bothered to press the button and charge up, uh, you get a, a cooler move and you get double the score what you would get when button mashing. Um, if, you, um, uh, if you are really a little bit more skilled and you time your button presses right, which is, for example, like this, I can get a counter-attack and I get double the score I would get from this, uh, the special move I make. So you start to see what's happening here. A lot of the skill of this is based on the score and the score gives you experience and the experience allows you to power up your hero. So that's some, you know, that's basically tapping, holding, charging up, flour what we call flourishing and blocking. That's all on the button. But let's see if we can have some more interesting stuff. And the interesting stuff I'll talk to you about now is this is a complete physics-based combat system. In other words, the amount of damage that you are causing your enemies is dependent upon the blows that you make and what they hit.